Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, Grace. That song that just played was very appropriate. My soul says yes. We have to get to a place where our soul will say yes, despite what's going on in our lives. You know, I find even sometimes myself, we love God under conditions, but he loves us unconditionally. So no matter what's going on in our lives, our soul should say yes. Can everyone stand? I'm going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to read the scripture and then we'll do our mission and our vision. Father, most gracious, most honorable, most merciful, you are enduring. You are all loving. God, we lift you up and we exalt you this morning, God. God, we in the spirit laid down at your feet to worship you, God, because you are worthy of the worship. You are worthy of the honor. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy to be exalted, God. You are everything, God. You are mighty, God. You are our protector, God. You are our provider, God. You're the one who sustains us, God. You're the one who keeps us, God. You're the one who moves every obstacle, oh God. You make a pathway for us every single time God you move the mountains God you move it out of our way Lord God so there's a way for us to get to the other side of things God and we just want to say thank you God thank you for being an obstacle remover God in the name of Jesus God I just want to thank you God God I thank you for the doors that you opened for me God I thank you for the doors that you shut for me because it was for my protection oh God in the name of Jesus. Uh, I might not have always understood it, God, but you did it to protect me, God. And for that, we just want to say thank you, God. God, we thank you for loving us, God, because it's something that we do every day that's not pleasing to you, God. But you find it in yourself to forgive us, God, and to give us one more chance. You are the love of my life. And I give you glory this morning. God, you are welcomed in this place. I pray that your blood just permeate this atmosphere, oh God. Be present in this place. Be present in us. Be present among us, God. God, we need you, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you. And if, it's, if you don't do something, it's not that you can't. It's just that you chose not to. And no matter what road you take us down, God, because some roads are not always easy, Lord, but no matter what road you take us down, our soul will say yes. I will be reading Isaiah 43, and I'll be going from 10 through 13. It says, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be another after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, from the ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand when I act. Who can reverse it? God is gangster. <laughs> that's, what, that, that's my favorite part right there. He says, no one can deliver out of my hand when I act. Who can reverse it? Who can stand against God? Who can stand against God? Who? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our mission, our mission is to preach the simple truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To heal the broken heart.
unstoppable. Hallelujah. So with God, I can do anything, Mother. I can do anything. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Put your hands together like this. Come on and say, with God, with God, I can. With God, I can get through this. Come on and say it again. With God, I can. With God, I can. With God, get through this. Come on, I can. Whatever comes my way, with God, with God, come on and touch yourself and say, I can. Come on, let's say it again. With God, I can. With God, I can. Get through. With God, I can. With God, I can. Yeah. Get through. What can you do with it? I can. Whatever comes. Come on and say with God. I don't know.
know what your this is. But I know for me personally, I have a few things before the Lord. And I have to keep on the forefront of my mind when I begin to feel myself slip away that with God I can and because I believe in God I have to believe in the power that he possesses I have to believe that it is not of the power of my own might but by the power of God Worshiping all over the building. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your word.
situations that we're not worthy of being free of because maybe we got ourselves into the situation. Maybe we put ourselves in the predicament. But God said that you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You're worthy. You're worth it. You're worth it. That's the root word of worthy. Be your worth. Your worth. Your worth. with good things God that I may be able to preach to your people what you have given to me to speak on today God I ask oh God that you will decrease me and increase in me oh God that it will be none of me oh God but all of you Father God we ask oh God that you will loosen this place God we ask that you will set free in this place in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and we believe it so in Jesus' name, amen and amen. On last Sunday, there was an awesome move of God. And um, I have a sermon called Cry Out, Freedom from a Slave Mentality. Well, we're going to do part two. We're going we're gonna to dig deep into what that means on this Sunday. I thank God for my cousins because when I told them, they said, no, you need to go ahead on and speak what God has given to you to speak. You don't want to let it go to waste. So I said, well, all right then. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 through 14. When you have that, you can say amen. Then the Lord said to him, know for certain that for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward, they will come out with great possessions. So we're going to talk about a 400 year 
sentence. From there, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 1, verses 8 through 14. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramesses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their harsh labor, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. Mm. So, I want to ask you a question. Because we're always talking about depression. We're always talking about how down we are and how upset and how sad we are. But what oppression have you had to endure? You've been depressed, but have you been oppressed? Let me give you a definition as to the word oppressed. It is an adjective. And it is people who are oppressed or treated cruelly or are prevented from having the same opportunities, freedom, and benefits as others. Being black in America, we have experienced such oppression. Many of us are still dealing with that oppression, but more so in a systemic form than what they did back in the day, which is a slavery form. Many of us have been ostracized by the way we look because it's not just limited to racism, but it's also sexism. A lot of women have had to go through certain issues. You're a woman and then you're black on top of being a woman. Now, I don't know what it feels like because I'm not a woman, don't want to be a woman. However, I have heard the cries of women when they have said that men treat them like this and men treat them like that and they're smart, but they were looked over a position because of a black man or a white woman. Women already got it bad, but then on top of that, she's white too. So black women have often been criticized, put down, and treated as nothing. And then the men don't make it no better because they treat them worse. Our black men treat our black women worse. Mm, I'm going to get into all that. <laughs> but I, I, there was something in school that we had learned. And uh, Willie Lynch made a speech and he says to keep a black man enslaved this is what you do I'm going to read it he says this and I quote I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves and I take these differences and make them bigger I use fear distrust and envy for control purposes that sound familiar doesn't it these methods have worked to my modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. Mm -hmm. Take this simple list of differences and think about them. On top of my list is age, but it's only there because it starts with an A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, 
sizes of plantation, status on plantation, attitude of owners, whether the slaves live in the valley on a hill, east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action. But before that, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy stronger than adulation, respect, or admiration. The black slave receiving an indoctrination shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years. Maybe thousands. Don't forget you pitched the old black male versus the young black male. And the young black male against, oh, you must use the dark skinned slaves versus the light skinned slaves. And the light skinned slaves versus the dark skinned slaves, you must use the male versus the female and the male versus. The female, you must also have a white overseer who distrusts all blacks. But it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kits are our keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. So Willie Lynch held the conference on how to control these black Negroes. Because I believe he had an inkling that if these people knew who and what they are, what they possess, and who they are, they will overtake us. Much like what was happening in Exodus. It seems to me that their 400 years versus our 100 and what, was it 26 years or 56 years? It was 100 and some years that our forefathers were enslaved. Seemed like to me, he understood the power of when people got together. So what he took from this was that if you begin to divide and conquer them, then it will develop a mentality that we see even today. You see the lights versus the darks. You see the talls versus the shorts. You see, uh, you know, even short people, because I'm going to speak for me, I've only been this height since, you know, I can remember. There's a thing that they call the short man syndrome, right? He always got to prove something. He always got to be the loudest in the room. He always got to be the craziest. Why? Because he's short. He thinks that people don't take him seriously. Hello, D'Angelo. I've been there, huh? Trevor, what you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Because he says, what you want to do is put the old black male versus the young black male. They always fighting us young folk. You millennials. You millennials. Well, I mean, what if we do know a little bit more than you? It's all right. Every generation is getting better and better. But see, what us young folk got to do is we have to listen to the older people because they've been there. They've done that. We don't know it all. We can help with computers, but sometimes we can't help with common sense. Most of us, we have technological advances, but when we talking about crossing the street, some of them just run on out there and it's like, wait, did you look? 
both ways before you cross the street. There are valuable lessons that we can learn from our older generation. But what we do, we'll throw them away before we even embrace them and say, hey, can you teach me something? Half our young people, men and women, I'm not going to just... Um, put this with the women because men uh, uh, ought to be able to do this too, but cook. Half our folk can't cook because we didn't, we, 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 and that's okay, you know, that's all right, but I'm just using it as an example. We'll get in the kitchen, we'll try to do something, but when mama was trying to teach us, our minds were somewhere else. So instead of you having buttery, savory mashed potatoes and, 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 and a good meatloaf. It's raw instead of medium well. Baby, that's raw. That one medium well, you didn't let it sit long enough because what you didn't listen, you didn't listen to mama or you didn't listen to daddy when time of instruction was taking place. We're winning on one end, but losing on the other end. And this goes back to the mentality. What I like to call a slave mentality. A slave is a person who is the property of and wholly subject to another. A bond servant. A person entirely under the domination of same influence or person. A slave to a drug. And then you have the mentality, the set of one's mind, view, or outlook. So when you put that together, a slave mentality, what type of drug are you enslaved to? Is it the drug of... I'm dark-skinned, so they ain't going to like me. They ain't going to love me. Or I'm light-skinned, so I think I'm just all that. Or you somewhere in the middle like, you know, me. I'm somewhere in the middle, so I don't, I don't care either way. <laughs> you know, I'm brown. You know, I don't care nothing about us brown folk. <laughs> right. I got through the door. <laughs> But many of us have become prisoners to slavery and also prisoners to sin. As blacks in America, we have been masked and looked at as sin, dirty, low class, ignorant, and clowns. And we don't help the conversations because that's who and what we have become. We have become a laughing stock to people because we, when, when we talk, me and my cousins, we were talking about this. When we talk as if we have some sense, what's the first thing they say? You acting like you white. You talking white. And then when you dress a certain type of way, who you think you are? Looking like that, dressing like that. We have succumbed ourselves to being ignorant and we think that dumb is cute. We think that dumb and being ignorant is okay. It's okay if you speak as if you don't have any sense, as if you don't have a clue. And in many cases, you really don't. Because you thought it was okay to drop out of school and go sell drugs. You thought it was okay to drop out of school and go somewhere and get pregnant. So now you're on WIC, you're on every uh, type of government assistance. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. Because we all need some help. But it's the mentality of the people that think that it's okay to stay in Section 8 and not get any better. That to me is a slave mentality because you think it's okay because mama did it. It's okay for me not to be in my son's life because my daddy wasn't in mine. What is he missing? He gonna have to get it just like I did. 
A slave mentality will have you thinking that it's okay to work a nine to five. A slave mentality will have you thinking that it's wrong to be business, to be successful, to think that you're more than what you are. And that mentality has seeped into the church. Because we will we, 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 say that God will bless you. God will open up the door. God will make the way. And we'll say, ah, 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 yes, he will. But when it comes down to it and he does open the door and I am successful, then you'll tell me, you didn't sold out. You didn't sold your soul to the devil for a buck. Look at you driving these fancy cars. But I thought you just told me God will open the door. I thought you told me that God want me to be the head and not the tail. Want me to be above but not beneath. Want me to be a lender but not a borrower. That's what you told me. But then when I start stepping into what God has called me to be, now it's a problem. Now it's an issue. The white man can be successful all day. But let us black folk get to the money. You are Uncle Tom. Now you done did something wrong as if suffering is supposed to be our birthright. But I come to tell the people, baby, it's time to cry out because freedom is not, gonna, not only going to hit in my house, but it's going to hit yours too. And I want you to walk tall in the blessings of God. I want you to walk big in who and what God has called you to be. It's not okay. Yeah. To be in bondage is not okay. To continue to be a slave to what the world say you ought to be. So I'm proud that I have a cousin that then stepped out there and said, you know what, I'm going to make this thing happen. Once I learned of what Sister Evangelist Courtney was doing, I became proud. Because here it is, a black woman, successful that I know of. Not only are you a doctor, but you own like a business of, in healthcare and all that. You ain't working for nobody. I don't think you work for nobody, right? You ain't working for nobody. Which tells me you're no longer a slave. And I saw the car you got out of. So it means like, it seemed like to me you doing your thing. Then Sister Devin, she said, not only am I going to build my own, but I'm going to build my own, educating my own. If that ain't being free from a slave mentality, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I thank God because he's setting us free. I thank God. Because while he's setting us free in the natural, yeah, he got to set us free in the spiritual. And many of us, including myself, we have become a slave to sin. We become a slave to sin. And who is our master? Well, I'll tell you what Jesus said. It's right here in John chapter 8, verses 34 through 47. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, this one he got crumped, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not 
do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children. They think they're getting smart. They protested. The only father we have is God himself. Ain't you heard people say that? I believe in only God. Who this Jesus fellow? Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So, in other words, Jesus is really telling them that you have a puppet master. You have a puppet master. What is a puppet master? He's pulling strings. He's controlling you. You find yourself doing things that you will say, you know what, I wouldn't normally do that, but would you? You might not normally do that, but it's somebody that is pulling your strings, making you cuss them out. Pulling your strings, making you want to go and fornicate. Pushing your string, pulling your strings, making you want to go and drink yourself into a stupor. Pulling your strings, making you want to kill yourself. Pulling your strings, making you feel as if you're on the low totem pole. The enemy is consistently trying to pull our strings. And I'm not talking about the people out there in the world. I'm talking about us as within the church. He's pulling our strings, pushing us, toss, and fro. We're being pulled from one level to the next level. There's a scripture that says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Which means that it pays to sin. In the end, you're going to pay for it. How are you going to pay for it? Well, it depends on your sin. Depends upon the consequence. For every consequence, there is an action that is related to what you've done. There was a saying at our school that our principal used to say. He said, to every consequence, there is an action. You determine what that action is. Lord, I'd have forgot it. No, you determine whether that consequence is positive or negative by the decisions that you make, is what he said. So there are consequences and there are actions and reactions to what we do. Be both positive and or negative, there's going to be some type of consequence. So if you do good, guess what? Good is going to follow you. If you do bad, then guess what? Bad is going to follow you. If you do evil, then guess what? Evil is going to follow you. So it all determines... How you do what you do. What are you, how much are you willing to pay for the sin? It's death. It's death. Now the gift of God is eternal life. 
But how many of us are willing to live in a dead situation? Or are we willing to live in life? Are we willing to go after it? Are we willing to be the head and not the tail? Are we willing to be above and not beneath? But is beneath comfortable? Is being the tail, is that all right? Is it okay? Because see, if I strive to go beyond a slave mentality, then that means that I'm going to have to break some yokes. That means I'm going to have to break some generational curses. That means I'm going to have to tell the truth about where I am, where I've been, and who I am. And a lot of times that truth is not pretty. A lot of times the truth will cause us to stay in bondage because we don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the fact that I was raped. I don't want to deal with the fact that I was molested. I don't want to deal with the fact that I was abused and misused and mistreated. So what I'll do is I bury it so deep down within me, not even realizing that I'm going through some of the things that I'm going through because I won't tell the truth about what hurt me. So instead of thinking that I'm more than what I am, I'm thinking in defeat. Instead of thinking that I'm smart, I'll dumb myself down to fit the adoration and the adulation of other people so that I can fit into your little box that you've put me in. I'll say, well, God, no, I can't possibly do the movies because then, God, I'll be, I'll be doing too much. No, God, I, I can't start the business. Because then, because then, you know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to my 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 my, my level of thinking gonna now have to go up. No, 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 I can't, I can't go back, I can't go back to school. Because if I go back to school, then God, that mean I, I'm, I'm gonna have to get up in the morning. That means I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to study now. That means I'm gonna have to put my foot forward instead of backwards. See, backwards is comfortable because when I was going backwards, I had some people that was pulling me back. I had some people that was happy with me going back. But see, as I began to go forward, then those people that was pulling me back were falling off. They were hard. It was hard for them to reach me then. I would try to call them. They wouldn't answer. I would try to text them, found out my number was blocked. But I was moving forward. As I began to move forward, then I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. Looking back, it looked darker. But see, why does darkness always look good? So then we'll go back and we'll say, ooh, I wonder what's that? I wonder what's, oh, oh, that was hurt. Okay, well, I think I'll pick it back up. Oh, oh, that was pain. Oh, I think I'll pick that right on back up too. Oh, 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 that was struggle. Well, I was, well, listen, when I was struggling, they was helping me. So let me go on back to the struggle. Now you're going back into slave mentality when God has said, I have come that you may have life and that more abundantly. And you mean to tell me that the life that I'm going to give to you ain't better than the life that you had. The life that I had, it was comfortable. It kept me in a place where I can control some stuff. Moving forward, I can't control it because I can't see God where you're taking me. But God said, you're right where I want you to be because I don't want you to depend on them. I don't want you to depend on mama and daddy. I don't want you to depend on government assistance. I don't want you to depend on them. I want you to depend on me. God said, if I'm going to open the door, then why won't you walk in? 
God said, if I'm going to make the way, then why won't you go north? I already told you that it was northeast. You went southwest. Yeah. We got to get to the point where now we're freeing our mind. We're freeing our mind. You got to free your mind. You got to get out of this thing called bondage. You've got to decide, I'm going to be free. Freedom is a mindset. You may not look free. But when you take one step, you're breaking the chains. But see, here's, 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 here's the important part, and I'm almost done. Here's the important part. I touched on this last Sunday, but I wasn't able to really dig deep. Galatians 5 and 1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Now, this is what the Bible says. So even the Bible says that you've been living in a slave mentality. What is a yoke? A yoke is a curved bar made from wood or metal that harnesses together two or more draft animals so that they can effectively work as a team. So when you're yoked up with somebody, y'all working as a team to accomplish the goal be it positive or negative. Now, the problem with being yoked up is most times we're yoked up with the wrong thing and we're woked up, yoked up with the wrong people. So when you yoked up with the wrong thing and the wrong people, you're wondering why all hell is breaking loose in your life. Who are you yoked up to? When you're yoked up to the enemy, that's when he becomes your puppet master. Because now he is... He is pulling you into some stuff yeah. that you, you'll find in your mind, God, how did I end up here? Who were you yoked up to? Yokes were also placed around the necks of people like shackles. To secure prisoners in their place. So in other words, what Willie Lynch was telling the people is there's a, there's a spiritual yoke that you can put around these black folk that's going to keep them in their place. It's going to keep them thinking, feeling, believing that they are what we <laughs> tell them. That they are. But I decree and I declare in this house that God is about to break you free. There's a freedom that's about to hit you, and you're going to walk into who and what God has destined you to be. You are about to take this world by storm. And you are about to go above and beyond what God said that you can do. God put it in your mind. He put it in your heart. He put it in your spirit because he's trying to break you free. Religion will keep you in bondage. I'm not talking about a good religion. I'm talking about religious dogma that has dogged the church for years that told you that you can't be, you can't do, you got to dress like this, you got to look like this, you got to be like this. When God has set you free, ain't a devil in hell can stop what God is about to do in your life. I wish I had a church in here that would decree and declare I'm breaking free. 
I'm breaking free from what you said about me. I'm breaking free from how you treated me. I'm breaking free from every issue and every situation that continue to bring me down. I'm breaking free from it. And when I come out, when I come out, when I come out, I need some people that's going to come out. When I come out, I'm going to come out praising. When I come out, I'm going to come out shouting. When I come out, I'm going to come out praising God. Because the shackles have been taken out of my feet. Mary, Mary said, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. In Exodus 15, 20 through 26, when Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing, Miriam said to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver, he has hurled into the sea. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. What That is why the place is called Marah. Some of y'all been living in Marah. You've been drinking water that was bitter. Oh! So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it in the water, and the water became fit to drink. God is about to give you a piece of wood to throw at your situation. So what was bitter is now about to be good to you. Where you about to go is about to be to another level. Where God is about to take you. It's going to be better than the bitter water that you drunk. But you got to go in praising. You got to go in shouting. Have I got a people that's going to praise him? Have I got a people that's going to shout? Have I got a people that's going to go after it? Are you going to go after it? Are you going to go? Are you going to go and get what God has for you? Are you going to go and be what God has called you to be? Are you going to go and get what the devil stole from you? In fact, don't get what the devil stole from you. Get it brand new because he probably painted it anyway. He probably put his spirit in that thing. So don't go back and get that thing. Go and get what God has for you. Because I promise you, once you're free, all you're going to be able to do is shout. All you're going to be able to do is praise Him. I dare somebody in here that God has set you free. I dare somebody in here that God has lifted you up out of the muck and the marrow place. That God has put you on the right road And that you're walking it And that you're talking it To give God some praise in here Praise him because he did it Praise him because he gon' do it Praise him I guess somebody To open up your mouth It's time to shout the victory shout the victory. It's time to shout the victory. Why? Because he did it. Why? Because he did it. Why? Because he did it. He did it. He set you free. He set you free. He put you on the right road. He set me free. He set me free. I was on, I was in a low place. I was in the muck and the mire place. I was in a place where I felt like I was defeated. I was in a place where I felt like giving up. I wanted to to kill myself. I wanted to get up out of here. But God said not so. God said not so. God said not so. He said if you believe in me, I will set you free. I wonder, do I have a 
free people in here. I wonder, do I have a free people in here that don't mind opening up your mouth and giving God a praise and giving God a shout? Because he did it. Because he did it. Because he did it. We was on our way to a burning hell, but he died on that cross on the hill far, far away. He died and he set us free. We was enslaved to the mental. We was enslaved in our bodies. We were enslaved. And but God said, I come that you might have life. So now you're no longer a slave to sin. Now you're no longer. Here's the thing. I wonder. I, I wonder. Is there some people in here that don't mind dancing with me? Because it's time to shout the victory. I want you to look back over your life and to look at what has God brought you through. You almost died, but he brought you through it. You almost succumbed to death, but he brought you through it. You almost had to throw in the towel, give it up, but he brought you through it. I wonder, do I have a people that don't mind giving God the victory? What does victory sound like? What does victory look like? What does freedom look like to a people that he has set free? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 hold on, hey, 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 glory, 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 hold on, huh, cause I'm about to get there, I'm about to get there, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, last week, we, we talked about worship, we, we talked about worship, and I said that everybody can praise, right, but see, there's another level to your praise, because everybody can praise, but he does not inhabit everybody's praises. You know why I know that? Because he says, I inhabit the praises. He inhabits the praises of his people. That means that you got to be his in order for him to inhabit your praise. So when your praise go up, His blessings come back. That ain't for everybody. That's for the people who are here. So I want to ask the people that are here, what does your praise, what does an inhabitant praise look like? Does it look like running? Well, then run. If it looks like dancing, well, then dance. What does 